the EV juggernaut continues in the ever expanding Indian EV two wheeler space, and this is the latest addition. The Vida VX2. This is the second generation electric scooter from Hero after the Vida V1. Now the V1 was a good scooter, but its high asking price and limited dealership network meant its appeal was restricted. Hero claims that it has addressed those issues with the new VX2. So is the VX2 the EV disruptor that we always expected from Hero? Let's find out. The biggest USP of the Vida V1 and the V2 was removal batteries, and gladly it continues on the VX2. On the top end variant, you get two removal battery packs, and although they look the same as the older V1 and the V2 battery packs, but these are different. You can carry these battery packs to your house, to your office, and charge them. And the second option is to park your scooter in your parking lot. You get this portable charger, plug it in over here, and charge your scooter. And the third option is the fastest option because you have a fast charging option. Go to the fast charger, remove this socket, plug it over here, and you can fast charge the VX2 0 to 80 percent in just one hour. So apart from the fast charger, Hero is also going to set up this community charger where you have a 5 amp socket. You can plug your scooter, charge it at the community charger. You have to scan the code and pay the amount, and it's done. So this is a new initiative by Hero. The Vida VX2 is one of the few electric scooters to get a battery as a service model, and this has been done to reduce the cost of the scooter significantly. With Bass, unlike the Honda Activa Electric, where the customer doesn't own the battery, you do so on the Vida VX2. So, if you opt for Bass, you pay a monthly fee, and once the plan duration is complete, the rider gets full ownership of the scooter. Following are the plans for the VX2 Go and the VX2 Plus variant. If a customer clocks more kilometers than the plan he or she has opted for, they will be charged the same per kilometer cost, and the payment will be adjusted every quarter or how one negotiates with the financer. For now, the plans are fixed, which means once the customer opts for a certain plan, they can't change it later. Over and above this monthly charges, buyers will have to pay a one-time fee of rupees one thousand one hundred and nineteen for stamp duty and documentation. The scooter that we are riding is the VX2 Plus variant. There is also a base variant. The power output of both these variants is the same, but on the Plus variant, it offers you quicker acceleration and a higher top speed. Talking about acceleration, Hero claims a 0 to 40 kph time of 3.1 second, and the VX2 does feel very peppy. There are three riding modes on offer. The base is the Eco mode, and as the name suggests, it is to extract the most range. But there is also a Boost mode. Once you activate the Boost mode, if you're riding this scooter in Eco mode and you want to overtake something, just go hard on the throttle, and it goes quickly. Unlike other scooters where you'll have to shift the riding modes, that is not the case with the VX2, and this is. Very clever from Hero. With respect to performance, the VX2 isn't the quickest or the fastest electric scooter out there. But as a city commuter, the speeds are fine, and it will do the job. The highlight of the VX2 is the throttle calibration. It is very smooth. There were no jerks when I was taking a U-turn, which we have experienced with other electric scooters. So if you are shifting from an ice scooter to this Vida VX2, the throttle calibration will feel very natural, and I think that's a big pro. The other thing is the gradability of the scooter. You were riding the scooter around Nandi Hills, and on the uphill section, even with a pillion rider, the scooter didn't struggle. The other aspect that I really liked is the region of the scooter. You had to go on negative throttle to activate that, and you can use that as a brake. So I think the region is very well calibrated. The throttle calibration is up to the mark. So as a city commuter, the VX2 is really good. The styling of the VX2 is more mellow compared to its predecessor, which looked very sporty and modern. The design update has been done to position the VX2 as a family scooter. All the body panels are new and have a curvy and smoother design instead of sharp lines. The headlight and taillight design is the same on both the scooters. 
The biggest difference is the inclusion of a single seat instead of the split seat that we had seen on the older scooter. The TFT instrument cluster layout is all new and so is the switch gear. Also, the new joystick makes toggling through the menu easier. The VX2 Plus variant is offered in 7 color shades. Talking about features, there are 3 riding modes, park assist, navigation, music control, geofencing, locating your scooter and more via the app. While the quality is good, especially for the switch gear, some panel gaps were inconsistent and we hope these issues are fixed. So while one might not attract many eyeballs with the VX2, the scooter does look fine and is distinctive. So it's time for ergonomics. First up, the seat height of the Vida VX2. It is pretty low at 777mm. I am 5 feet 10 tall. I can easily flat foot. And even for shorter riders, the scooter would be accessible. Second thing is the riding posture. As you can see, it is that of a typical scooter. Very upright, very comfortable. The only difference is that the handlebar is wide. Feels nice to hold. Talking about the footboard space. Again, a lot of space for me to move around even with my size 11 shoe. And the seat is also very comfortable and unlike the Vida V1, on the VX2, Hero has opted for a single seat instead of a split seat and this has unlocked more space. So for the pillion rider, there is more space and that should make the ride more comfortable. Another aspect that makes the ride more comfortable is the backrest. This is an accessory but something that I will highly recommend for you to go for because it increases the pillion comfort. Talking about convenience, you get a storage slot at the front where you can keep your mobile phone and there is also a USB charger. This front that you see over here is an optional accessory and it will open up more space for storage. But if you want to carry a water can or an LPG cylinder, something that we won't recommend. Again, it is against the law, it is against safety, but you know, a lot of people do that. If you want to do that, then you'll have to remove this front because then only it will fit and it will open up space. Now talking about space, the underseat storage is decent for a full face locally made helmet but there is also a base variant which has a single battery pack in that the underseat storage is slightly more. So in terms of convenience, also the VX2 is not bad. Another interesting feature of the VX2 is park assist. Now you might wonder park assist is there on all other scooters but it is different on the VX2. Unlike other scooters where you go negative throttle for reverse, on the VX2, if you go on the throttle, you can go forward also. So while parking, this is very, very useful and very intelligent from Hero. On the move, the VX2 felt easy to steer and even the handling dynamics were stable. While direction changes were swift, the real test lies in the traffic clock streets. Even the ride quality is decent. However, the front suspension tuning has scope for improvement as it feels a bit firm. The VX2 isn't uncomfortable in any manner, just that the front suspension could have been more compliant over broken roads. Same story is with the brakes. The bite from the disc brake could have been sharper while the combi braking adds to the safety aspect. The biggest issue with the Vida V1 was its pricing as it was very very expensive. Hero has addressed that with the new VX2. It is offered with battery as a subscription and because of that the asking price is very very low. Even with the battery pack, the cost of this scooter is very competitive and in terms of pricing, the VX2 is a disruptor and I think other manufacturers would be looking at this subscription uh, plans for their future products. But it is just not the pricing which makes the VX2 so impressive. Yes, the styling is a bit mellow compared to the older scooter, but it still looks distinct. The TFT screen and the modern switch gear makes it look very premium. But the best part is the way you ride the scooter. Yes, it is not the quickest or the fastest electric scooter out there. But as a city commuter, it is up to the task, especially the throttle calibration. It is very smooth, very easy to ride. And also the long seat makes the new scooter more comfortable than its predecessor. So if you're looking for a proper family electric scooter, which is fun to ride, which looks very unique and comes with a good price point, the VX2 should be a good option to check out. However, we would like to add that we have ridden this scooter on the open roads near Nandi Hills. Not the most ideal conditions to test ride an electric scooter, which is 
meant for city commuting. So we will reserve our final verdict once we ride the scooter in city conditions. But Hero has delivered a disruptor with the VX2 with its pricing and the overall package. So what's your take on the new Vida VX2? Do you think the battery as a subscription is a better model or you think you should buy the scooter outright? Do let me know in the comments. And as always, please always wear your riding gear and stay safe.